Hi, kisses, and welcome back to Nina Ready Eats. Today, we're having a crawfish boil with boiled eggs and a cold Coca Cola. Grab yourself something to eat because we're about to get to chatting. Let's do it. I just finished making this. It is scorching hot. Quick prayer. Let's do it. Whew. Make sure that I don't start tearing up here. I am wearing a Dead Sea Blue Facial Mask. Gotta take care of my skin, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh my God. I'm like kind of scared to even start eating these because I, I just, just got them off the boiler. Look at that egg, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. It's so good. I love boiled eggs. <gasps> Look how big these crawfish are. Right? Ain't they huge? Oh my God. And they're so delicious already. So when you buy crawfish, for those of you who don't know, oh my God, I did it again. Hold on, y'all. Had to take off my retainer. I'll put that aside over there. We gotta protect the investment, baby. Where is that claw? There it is. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is everything. Oh, yes. <gasps> Come here, little crawfish. Mm. They must be in season. Because they're pretty big. Today when I went to the farmer's market, they were so busy. I mean, slammed. I was like, damn. Remember never to come back on this day. But I was in and out. Mm. This is so good. I love seafood. I'm obsessed. I am obsessed with seafood. Grab yourself some food, grab something to drink, hang out, let's hang out and chill out. And let's have these in-depth, life-changing conversations. Please remember that everything I say is for educational and entertainment purposes only. You must think for yourself, process the information, do your own research. Absolutely, ooh, yes. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm in heaven. I was supposed to be born a mermaid, I'm telling you. Why does seafood make me so happy? I don't understand. I don't get it. Like it legitimately makes me happy. Mmm. Mmm. Today's topic might trigger some of you guys. And some of you guys are gonna be like, oh my God, I can relate to that. A lot of you may have to, um, you know, a lot of you probably seek therapy for these kind of situations. Mm. And I highly suggest that you do. If you've been, um, a victim of, say hello to my cat hunter. I love him. If you've been a victim of narcissistic parenting or parental alienation, it's a thing, okay? Parental alienation is a thing. Oh my God. 
I'm gonna explain to you what looping is. You guys might be like, what is looping? Girl, sit down, because I'm going to tell you what looping is, okay? And how they take looping. Mm. So delicious, wow. I am so lucky. Mm. I'm gonna tell you how narcissistic parents take looping and they weaponize it. It's actually really, really sad. Really sad when you think about it. So what is parental alienation, right? How does it work? And I'm when I start breaking this shit down for you guys, cause I'm gonna simplify the whole thing. When I start breaking it down for you guys, you guys are gonna be like, oh my God. That happened to me when I was a kid. Or, you know, you might be doing this to your kids right now. You don't know until you know. But, mm, I shouldn't say you don't know. It's very intentional. It's a very common, manipulative behavior. A lot of this takes place right after, usually, a lot of the times it happens right after some sort of separation or some sort of divorce. I started to research parental alienation a long time ago. So I know all about it, how it affects the child, what the outcome of it is. It's ugly, it is so ugly. So what is parental alienation, right? Parental alienation is when one parent weaponizes a child against the other parents. Parental alienation is when you have what's called the perception of a good parent versus the perception of a bad parent. Nine out of 10 times, both parents are really, really good parents. But one parent, which is the parent that's causing the alienation, is out of control themselves so they try to control the child and the ultimate goal is to make the other parent 100 percent suffer punish um they use it as a form of uh punishment towards the other parent when parental alienation occurs the parent that's causing the alienation doesn't really consider the child's feelings it's not about how is my child going to feel? It's more about how can I use this child to punish the other parent? Because I know that this parent wants to be in this child's life. I understand that they really are good for this child, but because I'm not with them, because they didn't do what I told them to do, because we're divorced, because we're separated, because I hate them, because I don't like them, um, because I don't approve of them, I'm going to weaponize the child to make the other parent suffer. The only person that suffers the most, it's literally the child. The consequences and the amount of suffering and the amount of trauma that that child suffers all the way into adulthood is so ugly. Oh my God. Mm. One parent will poison the child and the poisoning doesn't stop there. They use a method that's called looping. When the parent that's, you know, keeping that child to themselves, they will not only just poison the child, they will poison whoever is around the child because they can't do it by, them, by themselves. They have to build their own storyline and they have to take that narrative and they have to take that manipulation and they have to have a huge smear campaign. They will poison their partner, their wife, um, their girlfriend, their fiance, and it doesn't stop there. They will poison the grandmothers, the aunts, the uncles, 
the teachers, anybody that's willing to listen, they will poison all those people so that when your child tries to have any kind of communication with the other parent, that child is being told the same loop of that story. Let me explain to you what that means. The other parent can take a picture, a text message, an email, a video, a situation, a scenario, and they will loop that one scenario over and over again, like a broken record. And they will spin that scenario to everyone that's willing to listen, okay? They'll take it to the schools, they'll take it to the principal, they'll take it to the teachers, they'll take it to the aunts, the uncles, whatever family members, cousins, whoever is around that child will also be poisoned because that other parent cannot afford for that child to say, I really want to speak to my other parent. I really want to speak to them. I want to see how they're doing. I'm curious. You know, I want to know who they are. I want to get to know them. I want them in my life. So they take that narrative and they spin it so hard that they do not allow for that child to live that memory down. So they loop the story over and over and over again. So whenever that child does try to reach out or if that child even brings up the entire situation saying, hey, I want to speak to my other parent. I want to see how they're doing. It's almost a form of punishment because all they've been told is that parent is bad. That parent is not good for you. That parent, look what they're doing to you. Whatever that other parent does will get spun into that vicious lie, that toxicity, and they will take that child and make them believe, look what your other parent is doing. They're doing that to hurt you. Do you see how they're behaving? They're doing that because they don't love you. They will even go as far as telling that child, they don't love you. They forgot about you. They've never even tried to contact you. You mean nothing to them. That parent doesn't even like you, more or less even love you. I'm the parent that loves you. I'm the parent that's good for you. I'm trying to protect you from that other parent. That parent is a bad person. They will have everyone in that social circle tell that child the same thing. And if they have anything that they can loop, like I said, it could be a picture, text message, email, a video, anything. It could be a situation, a scenario. They will take that same story and they will spin it over and over and over and over again until that becomes the only thing that that child knows about that parent. Okay? It's a really sad situation. Now, what happens to the child? They're confused. The same hate that that poisonous and that toxic parent has for that other situation for their whether it's the ex-wife the ex-girlfriend the ex-fiance their ex-partner whatever they will take that same hatred and they will inject it into the child to the point where the child starts to hate the other parent let's say that you buy you're the parent that's being alienated right you're on the other side of the loop let's say you buy your child a gift or you try to take them out to eat or something, or you try to take them on a vacation, or you try to have a sleepover, anything, you're not gonna win. Because let me tell you what happens. If you buy that child anything, right? Anything at all, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be something as simple as clothes, shoes, a game console, a necklace, a ring, a hat. It doesn't matter what it is. It's not about the object that they're getting. You see what that parent is doing? She's trying to manipulate you or he's trying to manipulate you. They're trying to manipulate you. The only reason why they're getting you these things is they're trying to buy your love. If you try to spend time with that child, it gets spun again. They're trying to take you away from us. That parent is so toxic. When the child comes back, let's say the child spends the night at your house, right? If you get that opportunity, when that child comes back, oops, when that child comes back into the household of the parent that has been causing the damage, when they come back into the toxic household, A, they'll either question that child to collect data from them. What do they say? Who are they with? What's their living situation? Um, did they buy you anything? Where did they take you? What are they doing? What does the house look like? They'll just gather as much data as they can from the child. And the child is so naive. He doesn't know he's being manipulated. 
or she doesn't know she's being manipulated. The child has no idea that they're being manipulated. All they know is that they just came back from the bad parents, you know, house. And now they're under the pressure of having to, you know, give all this data up. They have no privacy, none whatsoever. Okay. And the hate campaign, it's so at large that they start to themselves feel, the child starts to feel alone. They start to feel alone. Well, nobody likes the other parent that's being alienated. Nobody likes them. So I'm not going to like them either. They forgot about me. They don't love me. And they're trusting. They're very naively trusting the parent that they're actually with. And they don't even know they've been manipulated. I mean, it's the saddest shit ever. And by the time that child wakes up from that toxicity, once that child realizes, and it usually happens when they have moved out of the, the, um, the toxic parent's house, when they get away from the people in that social circle, when they have room to breathe and think for themselves, it all comes flushing out. Then they start to resent the people around them because once that child finds out that the entire time they have been lied to, manipulated, used, weaponized, that backlash, whoo, I would never want to be on that side of the fence. That's going to be ugly. That's going to be ugly. You don't ever want to be that parent that's doing the alienating. Mm -mm. The toxic parent that's doing the alienated is so selfish, so egotistical, so arrogant, so comfortable in causing damage that they don't even care. They don't even care what the repercussions are because they're so busy trying to hurt that other parent. They don't even consider their own child's feelings. Okay? That child can start to have suicidal thoughts. That child can start to feel abandoned, neglected, um, disposable. They feel alone. That child cannot go to anybody in that social circle and say, I really miss my parent because the minute that they do, if they show any kind of interest, the, the squeeze is not worth the juice. There's, there's punishments that happen, whether it's verbal, emotional, or physical, they will find a way to punish that child so they don't ever bring up that other parent. And because they're so afraid of getting in trouble or saying the wrong thing, they won't even bring up the other parent. And even if they want to bring up that other parent, they can't. They're not strong enough to fight off all these other adults around them that have been manipulating that child. And when they do this for years and years and years and years, when that child becomes an adult, they have trust issues. They have abandonment issues. They have mommy and daddy issues. I mean, it's bad. It's real bad. And it could take decades, decades before that child wakes up from what's going on. Decades, okay? So that's how the toxic parents that are around that child will alienate not just the parent, but the child themselves. And the amount of damage that is being caused by the people that are supposed to protect you and love you, it's so grand. This, the, the amount of pain and the scale is so big and so massive that, I mean, it could take years of therapy before that child understands what really happened to them. And I've been watching a lot of, um, hold on. I've been watching a lot of videos on children that have woken up from the narcissistic abuse of that toxic parent. And years later, you know, they do have healthy relationships with the other parent. And it, it gets so bad that they end up, in some situations, they end up cutting off that entire social circle 
that was poisoned because they no longer want to deal with that toxicity and they understand what happened. And once they understand what happens and the truth gets out, there's no reverse in that. Because it was so, the child will understand that it was maliciously done. That is guaranteed that that child will understand what happened and how he was used as a weapon to hurt the other parent. Mm -mm. I think that parents that do that kind of stuff, they're very insecure of themselves and they're highly jealous. The level of jealousy and the lack of control that they have over themselves is crazy. I'm like, holy crap. So like the more research that I do about these kind of topics, you can clearly see how things happen in life and how they take a turn. I've spoken to people that have experienced parental alienation as adults. And they're like, yeah, you know, I stopped talking to my mom or I stopped talking to my dad. I cut everybody off because once I realized what they did to me and that it was on purpose, I cut them all off. And as an adult, they will not have a relationship with that entire side of the family. It's crazy. And everything that's done in a malicious way, all that stuff will come out to light sooner or later. All you got to do, if you're the parent that's experiencing these kind of things, you just got to stay patient. Just stay calm. Mm -mm. You do not have to carry the guilt or the cross that they have carved for you. You don't have to do that. At all. That is not your burden to carry. That is not the child's burden to carry. Okay? So you don't. You can live your life. Just go ahead and move on with your life. It's them if you do, them if you don't. If you continue to, you know, be, be a part of that child's life, they're going to see that as if you're trying to, like, be intrusive or if you're trying to, you know, bombard their life or, or ruin their life. Because let me tell you why that child will think that you're there to ruin their life if you're the other parent that's being alienated from your own child. Because the toxic parent will make it hell for that child if they even think about bringing up the alienated parent. They will make it hell for that child. So that child becomes fearful. Even if they want to, they become so scared of what the repercussions are going to be, of what the punishment is going to be. Like I said, the squeeze is not worth the juice to that child. So they'd rather just not deal with it at all and comply with the toxic parent. The child doesn't even understand that they have been poisoned, that they've been manipulated, that they've been taken advantage of. The child has no idea because in that child's mind is, I'm being protected from this bad person. Everyone around me thinks that this is a bad person and that's how it works. I mean, it's, it's the saddest shit ever. Mm. And the more research that you do, I had to turn off that ginger tea. The more research that you do when it comes to parental alienation, when I, I suggest that if you guys are experiencing any of this, or if you're a child that has been exposed to parental alienation, do your research. Do your research. That way you can understand what is being done to you and you don't have to you know, go on the rest of your life wondering or feeling guilty or feeling bad about the kind of cards that you have been dealt in life. Educate yourself, especially if you're an adult. And if you even sus suspect that this happened to you as a child, do your research. Mm. I feel bad because... There's so many kids out there that have no idea that they're being manipulated. They've been brainwashed. They've been gaslighted. They've been 100%. They're so naive and so innocent that they want to trust the toxic parent that they're with. And they don't even know that they themselves have become poisoned. I mean, it's sad. It's real, real sad.
It's real sad. But rest assured, mm, that if you are a loving parent, things do come and tables do turn. And all you got to do is wait and be patient. It's not up to you to, you know, I wouldn't be the kind of parent that's going to demand, oh, yeah, well, this is what's going to happen. Mm -mm, you ain't got to do none of that. Just chill. Just chill. Because when that truth come out, whoo, you're sitting on the right side of the fence. Just chill. Relax. Don't react. Don't do anything. Because whatever you do will be spun. And they will tell that child, you see, I told you she didn't love you. I told you he didn't love you. I told you they didn't love you. I told you this. I told you this. You see what they're doing? Look at them. Look how they're behaving. This is why I kept you away from them. This is why. And this is why no matter what you do, no matter what you do, it will be spun and it will be looped over and over and over and over again. That narrative, they will hold on to that narrative, baby. Their ultimate goal is to make you look crazy in front of that child and everyone else around that child. Oh, baby, but when the truth is out and the truth come out, whoo, it's going to be, now that's going to be like, yo, I remember when I woke up from my mother and what the hell she was doing to me. I was 37 years old. When I woke up from that loop. Yeah. And it wasn't parental alienation in my case. In my case, it was just a narcissistic mother that was really jealous of her daughter. When a parent envies you, when a parent is jealous of you. Hmm. And you know what's so crazy? A lot of adults, they don't even, they can't understand the concept of a parent being jealous of their child. Oh, it's a thing, baby. Oh, it's a thing. If you're prettier, or if you are more handsome, or if you're smarter, or if you're more educated, or if you have a better personality, all of that, they're jealous and envious of their own siblings, their own children their own like creations they're they're jealous of them mm -mm. i've experienced so much in life that i had to I, it forced me to educate myself on human behavior and educate myself to the level that i have understanding doing research watching videos Reading, doing audiobooks, all that stuff. Man. All that guilt you feel starts to go away. All the pain you feel starts to go away. Because you understand that you're not the problem. You get it. You're like, oh, damn. I'm not the problem. I was never the problem. You start to understand those kind of things. The pa parents, when they try to alienate their kids from other parents, it's a sign of weakness. They're not mature enough to handle their own feelings. They have, you know, abandonment issues themselves. They repeat the vicious cycle from their childhood and they're not smart enough or even strong enough to break that cycle. So they repeat all that toxicity over again, all over again. There's no getting away from it because they're not strong enough to live a different life. They're not strong enough to make different decisions. So they repeat their childhood with their children to the T. Almost like it was scripted like a movie. They repeat it to the T. It's the craziest shit ever. It's so crazy. I'm just glad that I myself, I was never that kind of a parent ever. I mean, I just, 
the thought never even crossed my mind. I would have, I've never, and I would have never done that to my own child, ever. It, it just never, it never crossed my mind to do that, ever. Not one time. Okay. I always understood growing up, first of all, I was raised without a father. I had a stepdad in my life. My stepdad was a heroin addict. Not a good example, you know? So, and he was never home. He was always in the streets doing drugs. I learned a lot from him. He taught me what not to do. So I always said to myself, if I ever grow up, I will never, ever, ever um, subject my child to not having access to both parents. I always knew that I would have never done that. I was like, yo, that shit's not even cool. Like, it, it's just not, it doesn't even, it doesn't even make sense. Mm. That's not real love. You don't really love that child. You don't even care for that child. If you're willing to hurt your own seed, if you're willing to put your own child through that kind of trauma, it's not like we, we don't live in a world where you can't pull this up and educate yourself on the consequences of parental alienation, the consequences of narcissistic parenting. We don't live in an era where information is not readily available to us. You can just Google it. And you should be, you know, mature enough to understand the damage that you are cut causing your own child. And if you're not smart enough to do stuff like that, no one can help you. <laughs> you're a lost cause. You're a lost cause. I remember when I was pregnant, I looked up parenting guides. You know, what's what's the best thing, that, the best ways to raise a child? From the minute my child was born, I had him on Baby Can Read. It's a program where, I mean, obviously he was a couple weeks old, so he doesn't know what he's watching. But the repetition of words and colors, sooner or later, they're going to understand what they're watching. I always make sure that I, you know, took care of what he was eating. Like, I paid attention to what he was eating. Home-cooked meals as often as I could. Um, you know, I would make sure that my son re read, uh, these little books, <laughs> these little one or two page, three, four books. It was so cute. So every time before we went to bed, I would make sure that my son would read something and then we would pray together because I wanted my son to, you know, have that discipline. I would always tell my son things like, you are so smart, honey. You are so brave. You are so strong. Things like that. I always encourage my son. Always. Mm. I'm by nature. I'm a nurturer. I'm a Virgo. So I love to nurture. I love to educate. I love those things. I love passing knowledge forward. And I always knew not to do those kind of things to my own child. I didn't want my child to have trauma when he got older. I knew the consequences of that kind of behavior. I knew that. Mm. But when people are weak, when they're insecure, when they're arrogant, when they feel and they know that they're less than, when they know that, they don't care. They don't even care about themselves. How are they gonna care about a child? How would they care about a child if they can't even care about themselves? Mm -mm. How, are gonna, how are they gonna do those things? You can't force somebody Excuse me, you can't force somebody to love themselves. You can't. They got to want to do that.
you can't force somebody to educate themselves. I mean, a lot of parents nowadays, it's not because they don't have access to information. It's because they make the conscious choice to maliciously do these things. I honestly believe in karma. And it doesn't make sense for you to wake up every day being sad about what's being done to you or your child. Because sadness turns into depression. Depression turns into other things. And before you know it, you're on a downward spiral. Let things unfold the way they need to unfold. Give everything time. This world spins every day. Every 24 hours, it spins. Trust me. Just do the right thing. Do the right thing. Keep yourself together. You know what I'm saying? Keep yourself in a positive headspace. Love yourself. Protect yourself from energy parasites and energy seekers. Protect yourself from the kind of people that want to continuously, purposely keep you down and keep you sad. You don't have to feel that way. Mm. If you know in your heart that you're doing everything and you've done everything that you had to do for that child, you could chill. You don't got to wake up feeling guilty about nothing. Relax. <laughs> the world takes many turns. The world takes many turns. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself because I've never been that kind of a parent ever, ever. And that's something that I could like look in the mirror and be like, thank God. Thank God I was not that kind of a parent. I was the opposite kind of parent. You know what I'm saying? The opposite. I always made sure that there was an open line of communication. I always made sure that, you know, I never ever went to my child and said things like, eh, eh, eh. never. It wasn't even a topic of conversation in my household. The opposing parent, never. The only thing I would say is you need to call daddy. And that's all I would say. There were times where I would mail gifts to my son like, I would buy the gift, and I would mail it to my son and tell my son, oh, that came from daddy. Well, where's daddy? Oh, daddy's working. Never, <laughs> never, not once. My son can never say, oh, my mom used to. Never. I was, ne I was never an insecure parent. I knew that it wasn't beneficial for my son to be raised without a dad. I knew that because I was raised without a dad. And the dad that I did have, my stepfather, was a heroin addict. So I knew what kind of adult trauma that would bring onto a child. And in knowing that, I made sure. When I was pregnant, I did a lot of reading, a lot of research, because I didn't want to be like my mother. I knew that I did know. I didn't want to be like my mother. Mm -mm. We live in a world where information is abundant. And all you got to do is Google some shit and you'll get the answers you're looking for. Mm. You'll get the answers you're looking for. That loop... That's how all the damage is done. And they will take advantage of that loop and they would exploit that loop and they will. Use that loop and any given situation, any given situation, that loop will be on replay. Trust me. Cause that's all they got. 
That's all they got. They don't got nothing else. It's that loop. But sooner or later, when the truth is out, mm, it's gonna be that same loop that's gonna bite everybody in the ass. That same exact loop. That same exact loop. Yikes, I don't ever, <laughs> I'm so glad that it wasn't me. Oh my God, I'm so glad that it wasn't me. In my, situ in my situation, I may not have my child right now, but it wasn't my choice. It wasn't my choice. Mm -mm. I, did right, I did right by my child when I had him. My son was happy when I had him. Super happy. Loving kid too. Loving child. Very loving. Mm. He was very kind hearted. Very, very kind hearted. <clears throat> so all I can do is live my best life live a happy life, wake up every day and be grateful that I have another day to live, look forward and never look back. Cause you can't change the truth and you can't change the facts and the facts are the facts. Mm. Sometimes instead of going back and forth with people and fighting people and doing all that, man, screw all that. All you gotta do is chill and wait. You might have to wait five days. You might have to wait 10 years. You might have to wait two decades. But sooner or later, the truth will come out. The truth will come out. And once the truth is told, there's no putting that, once you open up Pandora's box, there's nothing that could be done. That's why I say, whether people approve of you or not, whether they want to judge you or not, be your best self. Continue to work on yourself and don't let up. Don't let up and don't look back. Because the amount of growth that you can do on your own, the amount of developing that you can do on your own, they can't take that from you. They can't take away your mental. They can't take away your spirit. They can't tarnish your soul because you know you're doing everything right and you've been doing everything right. So when you do everything right, you can sit back, relax, and that's it. Everything that's done in the dark comes out the light. <laughs> You got to love yourself because that's the only way to do it. Love yourself. That way you don't let other people hurt you. Mm. People ask me all the time, how do you do it? Shit, I'm not going to. I'm not going to punish myself over and over again for being emotionally weak at one point in my life or being mentally weak at one point in my life, at one point in my life, I'm not gonna beat myself for the rest of my life. Are you crazy? Mm -mm. I'm all doing that. People can loop whatever they want to. That's all no. <laughs> that only shows me their level of weakness. When they gotta gather the troops and, you know, have a smear campaign, it only tells me one thing. I'm a very strong individual. And I have nothing to fear. Because when you know you're moving in the right direction. And you know you're not doing no shady business behind the scenes. And you ain't being sneaky or dirty about nothing. You can chill, baby. <laughs> you ain't got to feel guilty about nothing. About nothing. Mm. Damn, these crawfish is hitting. 
That's how I do it. I stay peaceful. I remember living a really sad life for years. I mean, years. It was bad. I was punishing myself every day, crying every day. Man, I ain't doing none of that. I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> Actually, years and years. When people want you to live a miserable life, why are you going to give them what they want? Hell no. Mm -mm. I'm enjoying my life. Every single day. And I'm happy about it. I wake up in peace. I go to bed in peace. Shit. Listen. When you single, <laughs> and you can get up and do whatever you want, whenever you want to do it, and you ain't got to answer to nobody about nothing. What? When you can follow your dreams and continuously work on your self-development, when you can work on your own personal growth, when you can learn and continue to love yourself, there is no stopping you. There's no stopping you. You have to love yourself. Because what other choice do you have? I will never hate myself just because somebody else wants me to hate myself. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to give weak people power over me. What? You want me to wake up miserable? Hell nah, shit. I'm, I'm gonna do whatever, I, whatever the hell I want to do. I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna, I might be living my best life, my best life. Pretty soon I'll be traveling the world, mm. Japan and on. I know that's right around the corner. I know that's right around the corner. I would love to travel the world with my son. That'd be great. So when he gets a little older and he can think for himself, we can get up and we could be out. <laughs> mm. I want to take my son to Japan. I just want to show him the world. I don't want my son to be closed-minded. I don't want him to think that the world is so small. I want him to experience the world, listen to different languages, eat different foods, talk to different people. You know what I'm saying? See all the many wonders of the world. I don't want him to just be stuck in a negative loop forever. Nobody needs to live their life like that. And whenever he's old enough, He'll be able to make those decisions for himself. And that's a beautiful thing. Because it's not like my son is getting younger. He's getting older. He's getting wiser. And the one thing I do know about my son, he's no idiot. He's a smart kid. And sooner or later, it'll all make sense. Mm. I can't wait to educate my son on so many different things so that he can start his healing journey. Mm. And I ain't got nothing for time. <laughs> I got all the time in the world. I don't care if I'm 60. When he decides to come around, whenever he decides to come around, I'm going to be waiting for him. Meanwhile, the best thing I can do is continue to work on myself every day, continue to grow, continue to develop. Um, that self-development, that self-love, that's forever. Every single day, I do something positive for myself every day. Mm. And I've always said this, the time away from my son has not been wasted. It has been invested. 
and I've invested that into self-education, self-respect, self-love, uplifting. That's the best thing in the world. To know that you are the rising phoenix. And there's nothing anybody can do to stop it. Mm. That shit feels so good. Because I remember when it didn't feel good. I remember when it didn't feel good. And now that it does, and it's been feeling so good for years, I feel better about myself. I feel so much better. Mm. So you guys stay positive. Mm. Mm. And stay strong. And don't let nobody break you. Just because they want you to suffer, that's exactly why you don't suffer. When somebody wants to break you, don't break, baby. Don't even acknowledge that. Don't give that negative shit no energy. Don't. Nothing. Nothing. Just let people be miserable. <laughs> Get away from anything that's negative. Trust me. You don't have to stick around for negativity. Get away from it. Insecurity is allowed, baby. And when people feel like they have to have a smear campaign and they got to keep your life or your image on a loop, it's because they're weak. It's because they're weak. And the best thing you could do is move on with your life and let it be that. Mm. Because it is what it is. So until next time, stay positive, stay strong, and get yourself some good food. Mm.